does it feel good to be out of there? I'm telling you, nice to be back, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Disney movies where the voice cast goes hard. I'm a damsel. I'm in distress. I can handle this. Have a nice day. For this list, we'll be looking at the most notable animated films from Disney and Pixar, where every single actor gives it their all. Which of these voice casts is your favorite? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. The Incredibles Franchise Craig T. Nelson, Holly Hunter, Samuel L. Jackson and company may not have superpowers, but they could have fooled us. Mr. Incredible and Elastigirl, or Bob and Helen, don't have it easy, juggling family and superhero life. Nelson and Hunter nail every beat, though, making their characters multifaceted people. Which exit do I take? Traction Avenue. That'll take me downtown. I take seven, don't I? Don't take seven! <laughs> Great! We missed it! You asked me how to get there, and I told you. Exit attraction. That'll take me downtown. He's coming up. Get in the right lane. Take we don't exit attraction! You're gonna miss it! Their parents, supers, a couple, and so much more. Meanwhile, Jackson's hilarious Lucius, or Frozone, is a breath of icy, fresh air. We also have no choice but to shout out Kimberly Adair Clark, aka Honey. Though it's a minor role, her voice alone has us in stitches. You tell me what my suit is, woman! We are talking about the greater good! Greater good? I am your wife! I'm the greatest good you are ever gonna get! Don't think we've forgotten about Brad Bird's pitch perfect performance as fashion designer Edna Mode either. Talk about a scene stealing star. Superheroes have nothing on these actors. Fight! Win! And call me when you get back, darling. I enjoy our visits. Number 9. The Emperor's New Groove A voice actor can make or break their movie. Luckily, this cast goes above and beyond, creating characters for us to obsess over. Uh-oh. Don't tell me. We're about to go over a huge waterfall. Yep. Sharp rocks at the bottom? Most likely. Bring it on. Cusco could have been insufferable, but David Spade plays his egocentric persona for laughs while leaving room for growth. Pacha could have been boring, yet John Goodman makes him so noble and down-to-earth that he's impossible not to love. Kronk's clueless energy could have been frustrating or childish, but with Patrick Warburton's comedic timing, he becomes one of the greatest Disney henchmen around. Oh, right. The poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chosen specially to kill Cusco. Cusco's poison. That poison? Yes, that poison! Gotcha covered. Last but not least, Yzma could have been your basic boilerplate villain. In Eartha Kitt's hands, though, she's a compelling, hilarious, and truly formidable foe. Put all of that together and you have a winner. Pull the lever, Grunk. Wrong lever! Huh? Why do we even have that lever? Number 8. Encanto. Encanto is all about family. The family Madrigal, to be specific. The voice cast not only embodies their own unique characters, but also makes those familial dynamics shine. Stephanie Beatrice sets the tone as protagonist Mirabel, with an optimistic but vulnerable delivery that's deeply relatable. I am totally fine. I will stand on the side as you shine. I'm not fine. <laughs> Jessica Darrow and Diane Guerrero voice her sisters, letting us in on Luisa and Isabella's personal journeys. They're joined by the likes of John Leguizamo's Bruno, who ends up being far funnier and less terrifying than everyone thought. All the patching's done by Hernando. Who is Hernando? I'm Hernando and I'm scared of nothing. It's actually me. <laughs> I used to say my real gift was acting. <laughs> And we'd be remiss not to mention Maria Cecilia Botero's extraordinary turn as Alma, which radiates strength and grace. They, alongside a slew of other extremely talented folks, breathe nuanced life into the story. And it's like magic. Look at this family, a glowing constellation, so full of stars, and everybody wants to shine. Number 7. Inside Out if you've ever wondered how emotions would sound if they could speak, look no further than Inside Out. The drive out was pretty fun, huh? What was your favorite part? Spitting out the car window! Definitely not when Dad was singing. Wearing a seatbelt! Oh, what about the time with the dinosaur? It's a difficult thing to find people who can personify major feelings. You don't want it to sound too caricature-ish, but it also has to be dynamic, believable, and funny. 
Amy Poehler, Phyllis Smith, Bill Hader, Louis Black, and Mindy Kaling more than understood the assignment, though. Fear! Run. I need a list of all the possible negative outcomes on the first day at a new school. Way ahead of you there. Does anyone know how to spell meteor? Disgust. Make sure Riley stands out today, but also blends in. When I'm through, Riley will look so good, the other kids will look at their own outfits and barf. As joy, sadness, fear, anger, and disgust, respectively, they encapsulate the core of their characters who interact with one another in authentic and entertaining ways. Equally important is Richard Kind as imaginary friend Bing Bong, who isn't an emotion but gets us in our feelings. Take her to the moon for me, okay? Needless to say, we have a whole lot of love for the entire cast. Number six, The Little Mermaid. Look at this voice cast, isn't it neat? Let's start with Jody Benson, the woman behind one of the most beloved princesses. Wouldn't you think I'm the girl, the girl who has everything? Her acting makes it easy for people to relate to Ariel, a mermaid longing to be human. She's also in great company. What Pat Carroll did as Ursula is simply extraordinary. The sass, menacing attitude, and amazing glamour she infused the sea witch with is mesmerizing. And I fortunately knew a little magic. It's a talent that I always have possessed. And here lately, please don't laugh, I use it on behalf of the miserable, lonely, and depressed. Pathetic. And we would give anything to have a sidekick as clever as Samuel E. Wright Sebastian, because that's how memorable the actor's portrayal is. Then there's Kenneth Mars's intimidating yet layered King Triton, Jason Marin's wholesome flounder, and more. A world with such skilled pros is the only one we want to be part of. Yes! Dun, dun, dun. Number 5, Aladdin. Robin Williams' magnetic, next-level performance as Genie alone would have probably qualified Aladdin for a spot on this list. The ever impressive. The one contained but never duplicated, 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 genie of the lamp. While he is iconic, the movie wouldn't have succeeded if everyone else had phoned it in. Fortunately, each actor gives it their all, and the result is a true Disney classic. Jonathan Freeman makes Jafar a creepy and sinister villain. Gilbert Gottfried's Iago is unforgettable. And of course, there's the central couple. Do I know you? Uh, no, <laughs> no. You remind me of someone I met in the marketplace. Thanks to Scott Weinger, Aladdin stands out from the crowd, and as Jasmine, Linda Larkin does a royally good job. That's saying nothing of Brad Kane and Leia Salonga, who provide the pair's gorgeous singing voices. Aladdin's stars introduced us to a whole new world, and we'll never look back. Don't you dare close your eyes. Now. Hold your breath, it gets better. Number four, Toy Story franchise. And there seems to be no sign of intelligent life anywhere. Hello? Oh, yeah. ah! This franchise made us wish our toys could talk and sound just like Woody and Company. That's a testament to the excellent voice work on display. We never knew a cowboy and space ranger could be so fun. Yet Tom Hanks and Tim Allen make it so with their lively scene readings as Woody and Buzz. You are a toy! You weren't the real Buzz Lightyear, you're, a, uh, you're an action figure! You are a child's plaything! You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. The rest of the gang also goes super hard. Nobody can play a fearful dinosaur quite like Wallace Shawn, a piggy bank like John Ratzenberger, or a Mr. Potato Head like Don Rickles. Plus, each new character that's introduced throughout, like Joan Cusack's Jesse or Tony Hale's Forky, makes the story better. That's because everyone commits, and they'll always have a friend in us as a result. To infinity and beyond. Number three, Frozen franchise. Do you wanna build a snowman? We know we do, especially if our partners in crime are Kristen Bell and Adina Menzel's Anna and Elsa, and the resulting creation ends up being Josh Gad's Olaf. We definitely wouldn't be upset if Kristoff joined in on the fun. Hello, that's Jonathan Groff. Can you blame us? I love it! <laughs> I could kiss you! Uh, I could. I mean, I'd like to. I May I? We me? I mean, may we? Wait, what? The talented stars, both central and supporting, who lend their voices to the Frozen movies, 
aren't just blandly reading the scripts. They're performing in a way that transports us to Arendelle, the Enchanted Forest, or anywhere else the characters may go. They hold nothing back, which leads to really honest, moving characterizations, enthralling on-screen relationships, and yes, great humor. We'll never let go of how that makes us feel. The cold never bothered me anyway. Number 2. The Lion King The Lion King is one of Disney's best movies, and we have to give credit where it's due. James Earl Jones is the best Mufasa, making us want to soak up his wisdom. Look at the stars. The great kings of the past look down on us from those stars. Matthew Broderick takes the grown-up Simba and immerses us into his heroic story. Jeremy Irons' portrayal of the power-hungry Scar, meanwhile, is so frightening we have chills thinking about it. Long live the king. When it all gets a little gloomy, Nathan Lane and Ernie Sabella make us laugh with Timon and Pumbaa. But wait, who could forget Zazu or the Clan of Hyenas? Rowan Atkinson, Whoopi Goldberg, Cheech Marin, and Jim Cummings made sure the answer would be no one. The voice actors populate a gorgeous world, and we never tire of revisiting it. I'm going back! Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. The Aristocats. Everybody wants to be a super talented voice actor, and mission accomplished for this cast. Hercules. These actors go the distance and then some. Is she not like a fabulous little actress? Stop it. What do you mean? I mean your little chicky poo here was working for me all the time. Duh. Moana. We travel far to hear such talent, but Moana makes it easily accessible. Moana, Moana, Moana. You're so amazing. <laughs> Finding Nemo. While looking for Nemo, we found a plethora of amazing voices. You have been called forth to the summit of Mount Wanahakalugi to join with us in the fraternal bonds of tankhood. Huh? We want you in our club, kid. Monsters, Inc. There's nothing monstrous about how good this cast is. I don't believe I ordered a wake-up call, Mikey. Hey, let's talk more pain, Marshmallow Boy. Ah! Feel the bird. Ah! You call yourself a monster? Ah! Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Beauty and the Beast This 1991 movie comes to life before our eyes, and we have the voice actors to thank. We can't imagine anyone other than Paige O'Hara as the intelligent Belle, because she becomes the character. And for once it might be grand to have someone understand I want so much more than they've got planned. Even putting our protagonist aside, it's not easy to convey that there's a prince underneath the beast, but Robbie Benson pulls it off. Richard White, for his part, sells Gaston's despicable nature. We also have Angela Lansbury's turn as Mrs. Potts, which is downright majestic, filled with a comforting warmth. Cheer up, child. It'll turn out all right in the end. You'll see. As for David Ogden Stiers' Cogsworth, well, he's always right on time. And Lumiere lights up every scene he's in as a result of Jerry Orbach's wonderfully theatrical choices. Need we go on? There's something enchanting there. I told you she would break the spell. I beg your pardon, old friend. <laughs> and I believe I told you. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.